Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you are doing well and if you are grateful for what God has done in your Christmas, somebody say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's open Zechariah chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 6. I'm just reminded this morning before I go into the focus of my message. I hope it's not going to be too long. I just want to encourage you. I shared this message on Tuesday morning and the Tuesday morning prayer, and it's been bubbling in my spirit, and I pray that it will bless you. But first, from Zechariah chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 6, I want to encourage you. I was just reminded by what the Lord gave me on April 14th, 2021, and as before we leave this year, entering 2022, I want to encourage you, and I want you to see something here for us to ponder and, 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 and bring before the Lord so that we enter the new year ready. Can somebody say amen? amen? The warmest love and regards from our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Senior Francis, uh, Stephen Francis, Reverend Dr. Stephen Francis and Pastor Angeline Francis. They are not here this morning as they are preparing their hearts for what God is going to speak to us and to the body of Christ through his prophet entering 2022. So you'll see our senior pastor on December 31st. They're doing very well. Keep them in prayer as they wait upon God and as they seek the face of God for what God has in store for us as people. Amen. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 6. I will read it for all of us. The Bible says that in the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, the son of Berachiah, son of Edo, saying, verse 2, the Lord was very angry with your fathers. That's not a good word. The Lord was very angry with your fathers. Verse 3, we'll continue till verse 6. The Bible says, Therefore say to them, Thus declares the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 4, the Bible says, Do not be like your fathers, to whom the former prophets cried out, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return from your evil ways and from your evil deeds, but they did not hear or pay attention to me, declares the Lord. Verse 5, your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? Verse 6, but my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not overtake your fathers? So they repented and said, as the Lord of hosts purposed to deal with us for our ways and deeds, so has he dealt with us. I want you to pay close attention when the prophet Zechariah began to deliver the word of the Lord to the people. The word began, okay, going back to verse 2, it says, The Lord was very angry with your fathers. I want to encourage all of you, no matter what has been done previously, I'm here to declare that God is giving us His people a second chance. A new opportunity to get it right with God. And I want to encourage you people of God, as we enter 2022, we are privileged to have a senior pastor who's a prophet. He receives the word of the Lord and what God has for us in this season, but also in the long term. But you see, the attitude of our hearts must be aligned. Our heart attitude must be in the right place. And when God was about to decree and declare to His people in the book of Zechariah, He began by dealing with the generation and saying, look at what your father has done, but I'm going to come back to you with mercy and compassion. If you're willing to change your ways, if you're willing to pay attention to what I'm about to say, no matter, no matter what reproach was done previously in the past generation, the mercies of God is going to overtake. I'm here to declare this morning, the mercies of God is going to overtake in our life. It's going to overtake your family. It's going to overtake your children. It's going to take over, overtake your grandchildren. No matter what has been in the past, we are in a new beginning with God. But we need to be wise in how we pay attention in responding to the counsel of the Lord. I think two weeks ago when we were um, in the early morning prayer on Tuesday, the anointing was so strong. The in anointing of intercession and travail was here. And, and Pastor Stephen began to prophesy some things that the Lord downloaded to him concerning things that are happening even within the county. 
But many times as he was prophesying, the word mercy, mercy, mercy was spoken. Asking God for mercy. Even in the midst of the tornado that struck Kentucky and a few states in the Midwest, we cried out for mercy. The mercy of God is being released. The mercy of God is overtaking us, but we need to respond. You know, we are so glad our parents are here, Josephine's mom, dad, our youngest brother and his fiance who's getting married at the end of next year. My mom is here. The family is gathering to uh, anticipate the birth of our first child. But last night when we were talking over the dinner table, we heard a story of a man who was sick in the hospital. You know, our mom was sharing that story. A man was sick in the hospital. So many different diseases he had. You know, but he lived his life recklessly. He drank all the soda. He drank sweets every day. And, and nobody can tell him. So you name any types of diseases he has, he has it. Diabetes, he has it. He has so many different sicknesses in his body. Can you imagine... That this man is a, a person whom we know, the family knows this person very well. This person was in the hospital, in the hospital. And one night, this man had an encounter with the living God. Suddenly the windows in the room, like it shut close. And a huge cinema screen showed up in the room. And the Lord Jesus began to play the, the life of this man from the early childhood until his adulthood. This man passed when he was 71. But uh, like a huge cinema screen, this man came from a non-Pentecostal church. They don't know what in the world is vision and dreams and prophecies and all that. But the Lord Jesus came to the room, showed his entire life, and the Lord Jesus pointed to him. And the Lord Jesus says, when you were a young boy, you made a promise. You used to play drums in the church. You used to play music in the church. But there's one time he made a vow. He said this to God, Lord, let me be a successful man first. If I, if I can build my career, if I can be successful, if I can just get my life right, not only right, I can do something with my life, I promise you, I'll serve you. The years went by and this man became a successful man, but he never served the Lord. But the Lord said to him, at that time, he was in the hospital for a, for a heart surgery, I believe. Some sort of a heart surgery. And the Lord Jesus says, I'm giving you a second chance. The ministry that you will do is that every time you lay your hands on the sick, the sick will be healed. And I will start with you. This man, not filled with Holy Spirit, made a vow that maybe he, he thought it's a whatever vow. But heaven looked at that vow and heaven never forgot. And can you imagine the mercies of God? A man who lived his life in his ways was about to go kaput and God came and God says, I'm going to start a brand new ministry through you. And the Lord said to him, I'm going to start with you. Lay your hands on your own chest and you will be completely healed. So he laid his hand on his own chest he felt immense heat on his body. The doors, the windows went open. The vision subsided. The doctors came back in the room, did whatever test. Zero sickness was found in his body. Completely healed. But this is the sad story. He left the hospital. He didn't remember what the Lord says. He did not serve God. When I was listening to that story last night, it brought chills to my bones. Yes. A miracle. You can't go more tangible than that. It shows the crookedness of a human heart. Yes. But I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, as we enter 2022, before December 31st come, when we will gather for the switching of the year service, January 1 to January 7, we will hear the word of the Lord. Let's get our hearts right. Yes. Because what we need is not just prophecies, but vessels that will be able to contain the scrolls of heaven so that the prophetic word of the Lord will truly penetrate deep into our lives. And what we have are vessels that are ready to be used by God. The theme of my message this morning is how to become vessels of honor. 
and, and the primary text is from the book of Luke chapter 1. But I want you to see something I sense. The Lord says, Zechariah 1, verse 1 to 6, four things I want you to write down. Number one, God is proclaiming the call to repentance. First to us, the next few days, 27 and onwards, get our hearts right with God. Sit before the feet of Jesus. And if God and the Holy Spirit is calling into remembrance some things that are still hidden in our life, deal with it. Somebody say with me, deal with it. Don't bring it over to 2022. The mercies of God is being released. The mercies of God is overtaking us. The call of repentance is going to be preached once again. The lost souls are going to come. Dr. Stephen has a heart desire and a petition he brought before God and he brought that to us that next year at least 100 people must be saved in the sanctuary. It means the call of repentance is going to go forth from here to the nations. But it needs to start and begin with us. Can somebody say amen? amen. Number two, what is happening is that God is raising up a new generation of prophets who will boldly declare the word of the Lord. God is calling for new prophets to rise. A new prophetic anointing is coming to the church. A new prophetic anointing to declare the word of the Lord is coming. The synergy of the ages is coming. God is raising up the new breed whom he's setting apart for such a time as this. Number three, this is God's moment of a second chance for those who are willing to hear and respond. Once again, I want to say it. There is a second chance. I want you and I to believe what has been too difficult in the past, the mercies of God is going to overtake. A second chance is coming. A second chance of breakthrough is coming. A window of mercy is coming to you and I. Enter 2022 not with a sunken faith, but enter 2022 with a faith that is alive in God. There is a second chance coming. Maybe some of us felt that we've missed the boat. Maybe we felt I've missed the opportunity in 2021. I'm here to declare in the name of Jesus, a second chance is coming. A new wind is going to blow through. Maybe your ministry has been in shambles. Believe God in 2022. A double portion of God's goodness and God's grace is going to be released in your life. Can somebody say amen? Number four, break away from old patterns of disobedience. It's very important. Verse 4 says, Do not be like your fathers to whom the former prophets cried out. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return from your evil ways and from your evil deeds, but they did not hear or pay attention to me. That's the problem with them. Not paying attention. Number one. Number two is disobedience. God, deal with any old patterns. So point number four, detach from anything that gets in between you and Almighty God. Very interestingly, in verse 6, But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servant, the prophets, did they not overtake your fathers? So they repented and said, As the Lord of hosts purpose to deal with us for our ways and deeds. I want you to write that down. Ways and deeds. Two category that we need to really deal with before we enter the new year. Evil ways speaks of mindset, culture, and heart. Some people say, this is my culture. Don't try to change me. This is my culture. If your culture and my culture is against the culture of the kingdom, remove it. Amen. We can't be so stuck up by thinking, this is my culture. Amen. America has many culture, and the culture is not a good culture. Jesus needs to have the preeminence in all of our lives. Can somebody say amen? amen. We are the citizens of the kingdom of God. First and foremost, before we are citizens of whatever country you want to mention, we are citizens of the kingdom of God. Number two, evil deeds. What's evil deeds? Evil deeds speaks of the choices that we make. Evil ways speaks of what we learned, mindset, how we were brought up. In the name of Jesus, 
if you've been brought up in pain and disappointment, there is freedom for you in Jesus' name. No repeat for the future. A new chance, a new door of hope and opportunity, God is opening up to us. Don't live in your past. Let go of your sob stories. I want to let go of my sob story. Sob stories get us nowhere. Just wet shirts because of sobs and snot. <laughs> Wipe away the sobs and the snot. Look with eyes gleaming. Why? Because you know the plans and the purpose that God has for your life. Can somebody say amen? amen. So evil ways speaks of things that we have learned, we need to unlearn. But evil deeds, deeds is talking about now. Deeds is talking about, you got no excuse. It's the choices that you make. Two things. Repent from our evil ways and our evil deeds. Can somebody say amen? amen. Enter the new year ready for what God is going to do. Amen? amen? Now, let's talk about vessels of honor. Luke chapter 1, verse 28. I'm very excited. You know, my dear wife and I were privileged last week. We had the chance to play the role of Joseph and Mary. We were actually backups. It's supposed to be Andy and Shay, but because of a work emergency, we missed them. They had to go, so we took the role. But I was quite, you know, it, it's quite humorous how God works many times because three days prior, before the actual play, I was in my living room at early in the morning just to meditate on the word and just wait. And suddenly the Lord says, have you considered the life of Joseph and Mary? At first, I thought when I looked at Joseph and Mary, to be honest, their character didn't really interest me, you know? Because number one, many times we think when we talk about Joseph and Mary, they're parents. This generation have the thought thinking parents are uncool, you know? Parents are not hip, they're not youth. But do you know that Joseph and Mary were in the category of youths? God worked with young people in His first coming. That's why an influx of young men and young woman sold out for Jesus will rise up in the end time. So I was thinking about Mary and Joseph, about them. And so I went about in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to verse 38. I'll read it for you. Then we'll go to it one by one. And the theme is I want to talk about, you know, God is looking for vessels of honor. What is so special about Mary and Joseph? Think about it. If God is looking for a virgin, there will be many other virgins in Israel during her time. There's nothing that Mary can boast. There is no prophetic anointing, any of the nine gifts of Holy Spirit, nothing. What did God use in Mary? A womb. Every other woman has a womb. And if God did not want to find controversies or, you know, Find a virgin who's not engaged with anyone. Why Mary? I, I, I pondered, you know. What's so special about Mary? Why not some other woman? Have you ever thought about that? There must be a quality in Mary and Joseph that attracted heaven. And they became the only couple, the only man, and the only woman who can ever say that we were entrusted guardianship of the blessed Lord Jesus Christ, God who became flesh. The only one. Even the great high mighty prophets did not have that privilege. They did. Why them? That's the question. Let's read verse 26 and onwards. The Bible says, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. I want that kind of greeting when an angel comes. That's pretty cool. Nothing bad. Zero bad. Everything was great. Oh, you highly favored one. The Lord is with you. What more can you ask for? Right? But the response of Mary was quite unique. It says here, But she was greatly troubled at the saying. What could have troubled Mary? 
God did not say that. A disaster is coming, go run away. Oh, you highly favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greetings this might be. Verse 30, the Bible says, And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Verse 31, and it says, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Hallelujah. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let's go back to verse 26. So I asked this question, what about Mary? Why was Mary chosen? She had a womb. Every other girl had a womb. She was a youth. Many other girls was a youth. Something about Mary attracted God. And you know, when I read this portion of scripture, I found the entire play of the end times is there. How many of us are crying to God, Lord, use me for your glory to prepare the way of the Lord. You want to talk about angelic encounter? Is in that story. Visitations is there. It's all there. A miracle, sign and wonders is there. So what I saw in this particular story was a play and the Lord says, what happened then will again happen now. And God is looking for Joseph's and Mary's who are vessels of honor. First, I was perplexed. I have no notes, by the way. So I'm just going to go verse by verse. You know, imagine... Many of us here are in the prophetic stream and have been crying out of God, Lord, we want to see angels. Think about if Gabriel shows up in your room in the middle of the night. Light is brightening, bright, uh, shining so bright in your room. How will you react? A teenager, 21 year old, did she say, oh my God, an angel showed up. Wow. No. If, if we were Mary, Many times, we will be more perplexed to the fact that an angel came, an angel came, an angel came. She was not bothered, you know. It shows me, Mary built a relationship with God that nobody knew. In the eyes of the world, she's ordinary, but heaven finds her extraordinary. That when the angel comes, she was not in awe of the encounter. She was tuning in to what God was about to speak to her. You see that, my friends, my brothers and my sisters. I want to encourage you, maybe many times, many times we feel like my life is ordinary. I got nothing much. It's not about being extraordinary in front of people, but it's about extraordinary in the sight of the living God. And I want to encourage you, no matter how ordinary you think you are, if your heart is set on seeing God, meeting God, pleasing God, heaven's call will come to you one day. And Mary pressed in and Mary was greatly troubled. Mary was greatly, greatly troubled and Mary was trying to figure out what can the angel mean when the angel said, oh, you highly favored one. Maybe if it's our me, really? That's how God looks at me? I'm highly favored? God is with me? Praise the Lord. Mary did not do that. You know why? Write this down. Mary was a servant who's humble. Amen. Humility is about always ready at the feet of the master of what the master is about to say next. Praises did not derail Mary from what truly matters for her heart. 
and that is to know the will of heaven. You know what is a mark of someone who truly walks in favor? All our understanding of favor all this while is that if we're favored, we get the job. If we're favored, we get the promotion. If we're favored, I get the promotion, not them. That's the most basic level of favor. According to this scripture, true favor is when God walks with you and me every single moment of our life. That's favor. Through thick or thin problem, success, accolades and valleys of darkness, people who walk in favor are those who are never let go by God. People who can withstand the storm, that's people who are walking in favor. It's time for us to go beyond child, childish favor. I get it. I receive it. I was blessed. That's basic favor. Mary's type of favor is God is with you, Mary. Number two, second time the angel says, you have found favor in the sight of God. What did the angel say? Fear not. You know what true fa fa favor is? In the midst of calamities and chaos, you will have no fear. That's favor. Only the favor of God can make you and I fearless. Only the favor of God can make you and I strong in the midst of calamities. That's favor. Favor is the boldness to do all that God has called us to do. Why? Because we realize without God, we cannot fulfill what He has called us to fulfill. That's favor. And you know, the favor that Mary received brought problems. Oh, you highly favored one. Oh my goodness. What will my parents say? What will my society say? What will my fiance Joseph say? Let's talk about this man, Joseph. Why Joseph? Why Mary? One picture the Lord gave me was, it needed to be Mary because it needed to be Joseph. It needed to be Joseph, that's why it must be Mary. There is something about covenant that attracts heaven. I am here to declare and prophesy in the name of Jesus, we're going to see restoration in the family mountain in the society where sons and daughters will know the value of becoming men and wife in the will of God. Because God created men in His image, men and women, to become one in the same way when the restoration of men and women, they know their role individually, but together as one, the King of glory is about to come in. It shows that for young people, don't choose your spouse wrongly. It has to be Joseph. Both came from the tribe of Judah. But God had a destiny in Joseph. And God says, I want you to carry that name as a father who adopts the Lord Jesus Christ. That what God spoke to David and through Israel, it will be fulfilled. You see that? Can God have chosen another virgin who's not yet engaged? He could. But why did he specifically chose Mary, who was betrothed, which, is mean, which means in the original Greek language, Mary was already packed up presented as a gift to Joseph. God honors commitment. Commitment is attractive to God. I want to encourage you. Have you committed to the vision of this house? Have you committed to what God has given you? Brothers and sisters, family members, spouse, children, whom you need to fight for, don't let go of that commitment. Because commitment is attractive to God. Can somebody say amen? amen? There is something in Mary and Joseph that heaven took note of and God wanted the both of them. It shows me how godly marriage is very important. You need to be yoked with the same person. But you know that each had a sacrifice they had to play. Now open Matthew chapter 1. Pastor Stephen touched a little bit last week on the side of Joseph in the book of Matthew chapter 1. I want you to see something. Verse 18 to verse 25. In the book of Luke, the angel of the Lord was dealing mostly with Mary. But in Matthew 1, the angel of the Lord was dealing with Joseph. 
Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Verse 19, watch this. And her husband Joseph, being a just man, underline that. You know what is the criteria of the army that God is going to use in these end times? Number one, we learn from Mary humility. Number two, walk just. Don't be good, be right. Many times the church has lost, we have lost our ground because why? We are stuck on doing good. But that good is evil in the sight of God. Moving forward is not about doing good because the devil will do good. Because good is subjective. But doing what is right is not subjective. Because it's only considered right if it's according to God. Outside of God, it is not right. Joseph was a just man, unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. You know what this shows me? Joseph must be so in love with Mary. Imagine. If we are willing to be used by God as vessels of honor, walking in humility, walking just before God, but the question is this, how much are you willing to put on the altar even what is rightfully yours? I, I try to imagine the scenario, if I'm about to get married to my wife before we actually got married, Let's say a month before our wedding day, Josephine comes to me and says, I'm pregnant. What in the... Can you imagine? No precedence in human history that a woman can conceive without sleeping with a man. It will make it easier if Gabriel showed up to both Mary and Joseph. But Gabriel did not. Sometimes it does not take an encounter. It just takes doing what is right before God. If Gabriel showed up before Joseph, problem solved. Joseph also see the big angel and says, yes, yes, yes. Ba-boom, happens. Joseph did not hear. Joseph did not encounter what Mary encountered. And imagine the love of his life that has been dreaming all his life. I'm about to start a family with the woman whom I love. So, you know, we have many children. I can tell Mary and Joseph were in love. Jesus has many siblings. You see? Imagine Mary coming to Joseph and saying, I'm pregnant. How would Joseph feel? Sometimes that's part of the sacrifice of doing what is right in the sight of God, even when your close ones might not understand you. Don't let go. That's humility. Humility means, Lord, it's okay that I'm going to be inconvenienced as long as I'm doing the will of God. Mary submitted her life to her future husband. She didn't rebel. Some people think they carry a vision from God, but the way they see it is with a you know, thick neck of pride. Mary humbled herself, but she had to speak to Joseph. Imagine how heartbroken Joseph might be. But he was a man of honor. He didn't want to shame Mary in public. He wanted to resolve to divorce her quietly. Verse 20, what does the Bible say? But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Verse 21. And it says, she will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. Continue, next. And this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. The same obedience that was found in Mary was also found in Joseph. 
You know what? Finding a complementary partner, I'm not only talking about husbands and wives, I'm talking about business partners, I'm talking about people who you want to run in life with. Don't be amazed by people who can prophesy to you. Don't be amazed by people who can flatter you with their words. Find people who's willing to obey God like how you're willing to obey God. It shows me both Mary and Joseph were yoked together. What? Obedience. Walking with the same yoke is not talking about the same giftings, talents. No, obedience. If the person whom you want to commit a vision, a life with, is not willing to obey God as you are willing, stop. Because it will bring disaster in the future for you. Because at the end of the day, every single one of us is responsible to stand before the throne of the Most High God alone. Alone. And God will not care, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, who says otherwise to you, but God is going to ask, what did you do? What did you choose? What did you say? Whom did you make the priority in your life? But there will be a sacrifice. Joseph was willing to put the marriage on the altar. Mary was willing to put the marriage on the altar. To carry the son of the living God. Don't we have the Lord Jesus in our hearts? The Lord Jesus is not in our wombs. He's in our hearts. Even deeper and closer. If we want to be carriers of God's glory in these end times, then we must be vessels of honor. We must be. Vessels who are saying to God, it's not about me, but it's about you. It's not about what I think, what I like, what I feel, but it's about you. And then you know what Mary, Mary said to Gabriel, if we go back to Luke chapter 1, Mary said, how could it be? I'm still a virgin. I haven't slept with any man. You know, if Mary was a woman who cared more about her image, her question will not be, how could it be? She will ask, what would people think? You can know the heart of a person by the question that person is asking. You, 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 don't, have to, you don't have to try to guess, is that person godly? You pay attention to the kind of questions that he or she is asking it will either reveal doubt, self-centeredness, or faith. You see that? But Mary says, how could it be? A total, absolute dependency. What I have, nothing much. I don't know how, but you know how. Vessels of honor in these last days are helpless vessels in the sight of God. Not one gift, not one talent, not one ability that God is looking for in Mary. All that God was looking for is the willingness. Verse 35. And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit, somebody say with me, Holy Spirit, will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Write this down. Vessels of honor are those who are constantly filled with Holy Spirit. Oh, the baptism of Holy Spirit was present at the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the infilling of Holy Spirit in these end times is not an option. Somebody say, Amen. Everyone must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You're filled with Holy Spirit, not so that you can show off your prayer language. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. So why? So that Jesus can be birthed from within your spirit, man. But not only the Holy Spirit will come upon you, the Bible says, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The power of the Most High. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know this is the end times call of God. You know why? Because God is going to manifest the fullness of His glory. Somebody say amen. God created man in His image, right? The fullness of God. When I study the word overshadow, is the same word that was used when Jesus was transfigured on the mount. In that transfiguration, the prophet Moses came, the prophet Elijah came. They came to strengthen what God has called the Lord Jesus to do. But you know what is the sealing factor that brought the glory of God? The voice of the Father spoke from heaven and says, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. 
Being filled with Holy Spirit in these end times is only one. It's not complete until all of us is possessed by God. Then we can say like Paul says, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. You know, the angel answered her, the angel answered Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, therefore the child to be born. The anointing of Holy Spirit that comes on you, the infilling of Holy Spirit and the overshadowing of God's power has nothing to do about your or my reputation. It's all about Jesus. Everything that was spoken to Mary and to Joseph got nothing to do with them. You have to go through this. You have to be filled with Holy Spirit. The power of God will overtake you. It, it will overshadow you. But the Son. You want to talk about nameless, selfless, faceless? They are. Everything that happened to them, everything that was spoken unto them, got nothing to do with their ministry. It's all about one, revealing the Son. Amen. Revealing Jesus. The power of Holy Spirit will come upon us. The glory of God will come upon us. But the question is, vessels of honor, are we willing, truly, like, like the sentence that Dr. Stephen has mentioned since the, the conception or the birth of this church, are we willing to be forgotten as long as Jesus is remembered? Yeah. Somebody say with me, it's all about Jesus. All about Touch your neighbor and say, it's all about Jesus. Let 2022 be the year. It's all about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, do we want to be the vessels? The Josephs and the Marys. That will be written down in history. It is through them. The son of the living God manifested on planet earth. It is through a group of people in Shelby, North Carolina. And all over the world who's willing to be selfless before God. That the son will manifest. Verse 36, the Bible says, And behold, your relative, Elizabeth in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. Verse 37 says, For nothing will be impossible with God. You know what happened to Mary and Joseph? Here we talk about Mary. People who are yielded to God, I'm prophesying in the name of Jesus, when we are willing to yield to God in the days to come, your family members will get saved, your family members will be healed, your family members will be restored. Why? Because you will not contain the blessing for your own, but your relative will receive a miracle from God. That's why God created a family system, so that from one branch, the other branch can be blessed. Is it a coincidence that it's Mary's relative? Absolutely not. Why did Elizabeth conceive John the Baptist? For what purpose? For Jesus who was in the womb of Mary. If Jesus is in the womb of our spirit, if Jesus is in our hearts, nothing will be impossible for God. What this county needs is not another big church. What this county needs is not another talented, anointed church. What they need is Jesus revealed. Jesus, my King. Hallelujah. Because when Jesus is there, everyone gets blessed. Everyone. Some of you have family members who are not here in North Carolina. I am declaring it in Jesus' name. As you yield and give your life to God, suddenly you'll get phone calls from other states. God begin to touch them. Why? Because you are carrying Jesus. Your children in Great Britain, your children in Georgia, wherever they are, don't be shocked one day they call you. Why? Holy Spirit suddenly came upon them. Amen. Where was John the Baptist baptized with Holy Spirit? In the womb. In the eyes of the natural, impossible. Unusual. But it's for the sake of one, and his name is Jesus. God will move heaven and earth for the sake of one. And his name is Jesus. If we're carrying that one, Jesus, all things becomes possible. All things. Amen. And verse 38. 
Mary closed off this encounter by saying, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The true mark of the end times warriors of God are one, servants. You know, from this word, I was discussing with my wife. This is spoken like someone who's ready to lose her life. You want to talk about martyrdom? Begin here. When I was pondering and thinking about the words of Mary, it's spoken like a person who's ready to lose everything for God. I am a servant. Anything that God says, anything that you perceive in your heart and mind and what God have perceived in his heart and mind, what he desires, everything, let it be according to your word. The end times army of God are servants. Jesus, my King Church, 2022, let's serve even more. Serve one another. Serve the vision. Because every time when we serve, we are laying our life down on the altar. Because if we have purpose in our heart to serve, the focus is not on the servant. The focus in, is in whom is being served. If you are serving in a church, the focus is not on you or I who is serving. The focus is who is being served. Unless we have the mentality that I am okay, God, to be inconvenienced as long as the people whom I'm ministering to are served well, our service will not be excellent. Jesus said, I came to this world not to be served, but to? That's why, did he care whatever happened to him? He didn't care. His goal was you and me. As long as my people God's chosen children are served well, I'm okay. And I pray that we enter 2022 with, with that heart attitude. Be it unto me, according to your word. Why? Not because I'm special, unusual, blah, blah, blah. Because I'm a servant of God. So when I read this scripture, the Lord impressed in my heart. There is a blueprint of the kind of people, vessels of honor. Vessel, I, I, I said to the Lord, why did you give the name vessels of honor? Because vessels that are willing to be so broken as long as their King Jesus gets all the honor. Amen? Amen. So maybe some of us, or I don't know who, will one day get calls the call of a martyr. Don't focus on that first. Focus on this. Whatever that God wants, no matter how uncomfortable, how painful, how misunderstood I can be, I'm willing. See, if we are not willing, to, if we are not willing to lay down our feelings first, what makes you and I think that we are willing to lay down our body? Amen. Amen. But be encouraged, church. The king is soon to come. He is coming soon. Before he comes, the way must be prepared for him. The wise men came to Jesus. What did they bring? Gold, right? I will close by this, okay? One more scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 and onwards. I was reminded on the way to the church this morning. The days ahead, no matter how tough, you know, Indonesia is going to be back on lockdown. We thank God our parents are here, family members are here. Singapore is back on lockdown starting January because of Omicron. The world will continue to be in chaos and it's going to get even stupider. But the church, don't lose focus. We are here to manifest the glory of God. More testimonies of tuberculosis being healed will come in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Because we are dealing with the matchless name of Jesus who is coming. Amen. Look, Jesus chose. He chose. He chose to lay down his life. 
He chose to live a simple life. He chose. But when the wise men came to Jesus, they brought what? Gold, myrrh, and frankincense. Are those cheap stuff? Expensive. Before the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, He will have His bride. He will have His glory manifested because all eyes must see that He is the living God. We're living in exciting times. We are. Let's be part, like Joseph and Mary, as long as Jesus is revealed. We have the prophetess Anna, the prophet Simon, we have the disciples, we have so many other people that were involved in the first coming of Jesus. But never forget Joseph and Mary. The one many times that is overlooked. After Jesus was born, he grew up, overlooked. But they were instrumental. Whatever your role is, don't be jealous with another person's role. Not everyone is John the Baptist. We need Elizabeth's. We need Mary's. We need Joseph. But there is a call of God. And I want to encourage you. If you felt like you've been forgotten all this while, heaven has not forgotten you. You know who was sent to Mary? Gabriel, one of the highest ranking angels. Such honor. Why was she honored? Is it because of her? No, it's because of whom she's carrying. See, if Jesus gets magnified in our life, honor and glory will come. Because he said, you will be glorified like how I am glorified. So our job is not to chase after God's glory. Get close to Jesus. The Bible says, for we are, I'm going to close, God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. Verse 10, according to the grace of God given to me, Paul is speaking, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. Verse 11, for no one, somebody say with me, no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Not reputation, not spiritual gifts, not ministry, not healing, not, not any, Jesus Christ. Why is that foundation important? Verse 12. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with what? Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Verse 13, the Bible says, each one's work will become manifest. For the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. Now my question, if your foundation is Jesus, what material are we supposed to use? Gold, silver, precious stone. Now you tell me, is the house of God cheap? Who has the gold? God. Who has the precious stones? God. God has no problem in unleashing His divine blessing if we know what foundation are we standing on. I found the secret to blessing from this verse. Build your life and my life upon Jesus. God says, don't build my house with wood, straw, or hay. Wood, straw, or hay requires less effort, faster, but it doesn't stand firm and strong. The glory of God does not come cheaply. History has shown us many men and women of God who receive incredible manifestation of God's power, but how did their life end? Right? The end time church, God is going to take His time. Because he wants to make sure that the people that he will raise up in these last days are quality people. God gave a word for Shelby. Yes, quickening is happening in our generation. But do you think the work that is coming is going to be a rushed work? No. He's going to build his church strong. Somebody say amen. amen. Because God is looking for available vessels, but he's not looking for cheap vessels. 
look at a clay. You try to put it on the pottery wheel. If there is even a crack and you say, it looks good enough for me, the moment you put it inside the firing pot, boom, it cracks. When it's going through the wheel, there must be no room for even the slightest error. In the same manner, God is raising up this house, all of us, to be vessels of honor. Amen? Only God knows how long Mary waited for an encounter with God. Only heaven knows how long Mary was praying, seeking the face of God before the encounter comes. We only read the part where, ta-da, Gabriel shows up. But you and I don't know the life that they live in the secret place. But at least from Luke 1, we have a glimpse. The way they serve God, the way they respond to God. That's why I thank God. In this house, we don't only want people who serve, but people who are faithful. I will close. Holy Spirit just put this thought in my mind. You want to see a quality of a believer? Believer, See how that person is serving God. We have no picture of how Mary lived before Luke chapter 1. But verse 26 to 38 shows us the way she comes before God, the way she answers the angel, the way she positions herself shows the type of quality of a woman of God that she is. You know why serving God is important? Remember, she said, I'm a servant of the Lord. And I want to encourage you, if you've been long in the church, but you have not been serving, I want to lovingly encourage you to serve. You'll grow more. Because servitude, it's a principle of the kingdom that can never be replaced. Try to find the word congregation in the Bible. You will not find one. Servants. Believers who are added in numbers daily. That's in the book of Acts. What do they become? Servants of God. Serving is a nature of God. Jesus gave us the example that He came not to be served, but to serve. Amen? Quality people who are, who are serving faithfully. The attitude is right. You get the thumbs up of heaven. One day, the Lord will walk in and entrust you with the greatest assignment. What is that assignment? to reveal an aspect of Jesus that no one else can reveal except you. How many of you want that? In five days' time, 2021 finished. 2022. I pray. This is my prayer. Since I received this in the morning, Lord, I want to be like Joseph and Mary. So anytime when God is about to visit, He's not going to say, never mind, and walk away. <laughs> He knew when he came to Mary, he found the right person. The encounter is not the testing part. If we're waiting for an encounter, Lord, give me an encounter, then I'll give you my life. Too late. God has already seen Mary's heart. When he came to her, he knew the response that she's going to say. Encounters is like ice king on the cake. Do we need it? We need it. Because that's where the instructions of God is made known. But vessels who are broken before God. Amen? Let's stand in the presence of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and He be gracious to you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and He gives you peace. Be blessed. Be full of favor. In all that you do, God is with you. He will never leave you and He will never forsake you. Fear not, for the great I Am is within you and inside of you. And when He is inside of you, no one can stand before you. Thank you, Father. We praise you. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's give a clap offering unto the Lord. We love you.